Hey guys, welcome back to Fix It Friday. So this week we are back with the PC Engine. Uh, this is a console that was released in Japan and in the United States it's known as the TurboGrafx-16. Uh, it wasn't particularly popular here, but there are quite a number of really excellent games on it and uh, great Japanese imports as well. Um, so what we have here is actually an original PC Engine, but it's in a modern smoked transparent shell, which is made by Retro Game Restore. And honestly, I gotta say this looks really gorgeous. Um, but all that being said, there are a lot of limitations when you have an original PC Engine. So for one, uh, it only outputs RF, and not only that, it's RF uh, tuned to Japan televisions. So you need a you know TV which has channel 95 or 96 in analog. It's bottom line, really annoying <laughs> to try to use one of these in the United States uh, in the present day. Um, it has an expansion port on the back, and so you can uh, attach you know accessories like the CD unit to that. Um, that being said, that can be rather expensive and um, it also only gives you composite video at best. So um, what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be installing a new mod which was developed by Zaxor and it's an open source project called the Turbonanza. So what's really nice about this mod is that it replaces that RF modulator with a Saturn um, AV Multi-Out, a 10-pin mini DIN. And this gives us a variety of different video formats, including composite video, S-video, and RGB. Um, but also, really nicely, it um, outputs stereo audio to this jack. And so that's really great for some of the modern flash cartridges that are now available. So specifically, there's the Turbo EverDrive Pro, and um, that can run not only PC Engine games, but also CD games. And using this mod, you can also get stereo audio out of that connector. So it's a huge upgrade and it makes it so much easier to play and enjoy uh, the PC Engine, whether it's on a CRT or on a modern display. All right, so let's go ahead and take this thing apart and get started. Okay, so I've gone ahead and taken the motherboard out of the shell and there's really not much to it, which is why I didn't even bother filming it. Um, really what you have to do is just get rid of these four game bit screws, which are on the outside, which you need a game bit screwdriver for. And once that's open, there are three Phillips screws that hold the cartridge slot over here into place, just like that. So you just uh, have to remove those and the console is free. So now that the console's free, the next thing I'm gonna be doing is um, I gotta remove this RF shield because I'm gonna have to access this part of the board. Um, and then I'm also going to be replacing the capacitors because the owner of this PC engine wants that done. And it totally makes sense because uh, these capacitors are, you know, 30 or so years old at this point. So it's good preventative maintenance since I'm already opening up the console just to replace all of those as well. So I'm not gonna bother filming that. I'm gonna go ahead and just remove and replace all the caps. And then we'll be back uh, in a few minutes and we'll continue with the TurboNanza install. All right, so I've gone ahead and replaced all of the capacitors with brand new ones, and everything is looking great here. So uh, now that that's all set, we're gonna go ahead and continue with the Turbo Nanza installation. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to remove a bunch of surface mount resistors. Um, this is just to disconnect the Luma, the red minus Luma, the blue minus Luma, and the color burst. And specifically, it's these four resistors right over here. So that's R134, 137, 138 and 156 on an original PC engine. If you have a different version, um, like a Turbo Graphics or Super Graphics or something like that, um, you can consult the official guide, which is on GitHub, and I'll link that in the description. And it's just a different set of resistors that you need to remove. Uh, aside from that, we're also gonna be disconnecting the composite video pin from the original circuit. And it's this resistor right over here, which is R145. And again, the location of this varies depending on what version of the console you have. All right, so let's go ahead and remove that real quick and then we'll continue on to the next step. Okay, so all those resistors have been removed and now we're gonna go ahead and install the Turbo Nanza board itself. And as you can see, I've already positioned it right here. Um, the positioning does vary depending on which version of the hardware you have. So definitely check the GitHub and make sure you follow those instructions. But for me, I have a PC engine, so you position it just like this. So I'll go ahead and solder it into place and all of these vias right over here. And we're also gonna go ahead and remove the RF modulator because this is where the AV multi-out is going to go. 
All right, well, let's get to it. Okay, so as you can see, the RF modulator has been removed, and um, you can also see that I've taken a permanent ink marker and I marked the rough location of where the Saturn connector needs to be. Um, and the reason why is because we're gonna have to scrape away some of this solder mask here so that we can solder this down to the board and have everything perfectly aligned and attached. Um, but yeah, everything is all set on this side, and over here on the bottom of the board, um, we're basically almost done. The last things that we need to do is we need to solder four wires from these pads right here to these bottom pads over here. Um, so very specifically, um, we're gonna be soldering the Luma, the R minus Y and B minus Y, which are right over here, and the color burst, which is gonna go to the bottom of R141. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and just show you all the work once I'm finished. And then after that, we're gonna to transition to the top of the board and we're gonna solder on the Saturn AV multi-out. Okay, so all of the soldering is basically finished for this installation. So you can see now that the Saturn mini DIN is really, really solid on here because it's completely connected to the ground plane um, where the RF modulator used to be. And um, we've just soldered this little breakout board right on top of it. And so the flex cable is going to connect here and it's gonna connect with the blue side facing upward, just like how I'm showing you here. And it's gonna come around and come into the connector right here, again, with the blue side facing up. And so here's those four connections that I made. Um, so this one right here, this is Luma. This is Luma minus red over here. And this blue wire here, this is Luma minus blue. And then finally, the color burst actually goes to the bottom of resistor 147 right here and goes to this uh, pad right over here. So, so yeah, the only final thing left to do is to connect this flex cable. So the flex, like I said, it's gonna go in like so, and you've gotta do a little bit of creative bending of it um, so that it can get there safely. So we're just gonna close this up like that. And what I believe I need to do is just route it like this. And again, not making any hard creases. Um, and then the final destination is going to be over here. I think the only other thing I need to do is some minor adjustments to the bottom shell of the PC engine. So you can see there's these two ribs right here um, underneath the expansion port. So they actually get in the way of the Turbonanza. So what I'm gonna do is just use my flush cutters and remove them. Okay. Yep, there we go. So that was actually rather simple. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and work on that flex cable, and then we are going to reassemble this thing and give it a test. 
Okay, so we are ready for an initial test. And um, I've got to say, this thing looks fantastic. And here's the Turbo Nanza installed on the side. And you'd barely even know anything was there. I mean, it looks stock. It's pretty sweet. And here it is from the underside. And that's actually rather cool because you can see my installation work from there. So yeah, overall, I really love how the whole thing came together. Um, so what we're going to do first is we're going to test composite video because um, I can't easily do RGB on this particular setup. And then we're going to move over to a CRT and we're going to test RGB. Okay, so let me just get this thing in here. Okay, here we go. Very good. All right, so we're loaded right in. So let's go ahead and test Bonk's Adventure in composite. That's usually a good one to start with. And yeah, the stereo sound sounds very crisp and very clear. So that's fantastic. Okay, great. So all of the colors look fantastic. Um, I personally like the color palette a little bit more on composite video and S video. And then I also really like using Box Adventure because, um, well, I'm gonna just zoom in a bit here for you. But if you look at Box and you look at the blue sky, that's always a good indication of whether there are jail bars or not. And thankfully, as you guys can see, there are no jail bars. So it's a really crisp and clear image for composite video. Unfortunately, I don't have the S video cables for the Sega Saturn, but um, I've been told at least that it looks exceptionally good, and I've seen some screen captures on YouTube and Twitter demonstrating that. So, so yeah, this so far looks fantastic. So let's go switch over to the CRT and let's go ahead and test RGB. Okay, so right now what we're doing is the test for RGB, and I'm sorry about the way that I have everything set up, but for now I have to use a CRT and it's kind of tough to film, and I also had to hijack my Saturn RGB cables, which are down below in my gaming cabinet. So, so yeah, it's not the best situation, but I wanted you to at least see how really nice and crisp everything looks in RGB. So um, I have my EverDrive running. Let me go ahead and just pick uh, Bonk's Adventures, and that's kind of like the canonical PC Engine TurboGrafx-16 game. And I've got the stereo speakers going, and as you can probably hear, it sounds fantastic. And, and yeah, looking at the RGB, things look fantastic as well. Um, I'll have to say that Bonk looks a little bit more red um, in RGB versus composite video, but that's actually normal. Um, most RGB mods, um, or actually I think all RGB mods, have a slightly different color palette with RGB than they do versus composite video. Um, that being said, it looks fantastic. Everything is razor sharp and crisp. Um, so yeah, overall, I have to say, I really highly recommend this mod. Um, it makes everything look fantastic. Um, it also is a very neat and tidy installation. And when you're looking at the console from the outside, it looks stock, like you'd never even know anything was done to it. And it brings a lot of functionality to the table, especially if you own a Turbo EverDrive Pro, because you'll get that stereo output if you're using CD games, um, using the flash cartridge. So. Yeah, that's it for this week's video. Um, if you guys like this kind of content, then consider subscribing to the channel. I'll have videos out every Friday. And of course, if you have a console that needs to be repaired or modified, um, you can always reach me directly at oneuprestorations.com. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.